Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today a video a little bit different than usually. Um, basically the thing is I wanted to do a tutorial on uh, Viper Diva sound and the thing is I ended up kind of recreating the whole track. So here is the original as you can see and I've kind of recreate uh, the whole structure and obviously it's not exactly exactly the same but I've tried to follow uh, as much as I could and so instead of just doing a rack and a tutorial uh, it's kind of more like a whole remake of the track so tonight we're gonna look into uh, the track how it has been made what are interesting things to that you can learn from it and all the sound design from the scent all of the groove and yeah let's have a descent first So yeah, I kind of recreate all the parts of the track. So yeah, that's the whole project. So if you want to support me, you can buy the project and learn a little bit more about in detail, or you can grab, I will put for free, uh, all of the scent uh, preset and all of the MIDI from all of the scent. And yeah, let's dig into it. There is a couple of interesting things uh, that you can learn from it. So yeah, before you start, you can see, for example, the hats. I've kind of tried to color code a little bit the different elements. So you can see the hats, you have a uh, different this is like the different pattern and you can see along the track how it's evolved and the changement and the variation. Same with the main lead, you can see there is a uh, different kind of uh, melody or hook that are playing and alternating along the track. So that's really helped you to have a, vi a very nice global vision uh, of the track. All right, so let's start with the kick. For the kick, I've used my industrial kick rack. So I've used a couple of my rack. If you're not familiar with, I will put the link in the description. I will explain them quickly how does it work, but I'm not gonna obviously re-explain the whole things. So basically this rack, you have the kick here and I have some return inside the drum rack where I send my kick and it allowed me to have a rumble or to have rhythmic percussion on top of that. So basically the kick, it's kind of a 909 sounding kick. Uh, that I use my uh, Damage Techno uh, sample pack. Most of the sample I use are from this library. It's kind of 909 sounding kick. Here the trick is, I've been doing this a lot lately, I've applied a filter. So if you listen to the kick, basically the trick is to put a low pass filter, bring down the filter, and then, I've, I mean, you can play with the frequency, the resonance and the drive. And the thing is to apply an envelope modulation on the filter. This way you get. And then again, you can you can play with the decay, the amount, uh, the frequency, the resonance, the drive, really to kind of shape the kick the way you want. And then all of this process is this distortion. That's something like come uh, by default with the track is to make your kick sound straight away on top. And yeah, then you can hear, actually you have this rhythmic perk, which is basically the off big perk, which is basically, you can hear is uh, the kick with a delay. 
and you can choose to filter it you can choose what kind of uh, speed of the what kind of delay you want and add a bit of distortion that's always nice to have this top layer on top of the kick it add a bit of groove i don't think there was necessarily this in the original but it's a great things to add and then you have the the rumble which is classic rumble you know it's part of my uh, kick verb rack with reverb distortion and then you have a low pass filter with mono and some sidechain so this is kind of classic treatment and so then i've used my other rack kick punch basically here again it's parallel processing i have my kick which is going through this chain here which is dry and then i have the wet one which sounds like this and again, it's basically, I've created this rack because sometimes, especially when you add rumble, you feel that the kick is like kind of struggle to cut through the mix and it doesn't breathe enough. It's, it's kind of a bit weak and mispunched. So I create that. So in this parallel process, I have some distortion and I can EQ as well. And I add a bit of reverb and it's always kind of, you see without, And that's really great to really help you kick. And then finally, I've had some drum bass. And here again, kind of to really push your kick to his limit, I put in a hard mode like this, add a bit of bass, a bit of drive. Always subtle, you see a little bit, not much, adding a bit of transient. Nothing too crazy, a bit of boom as well, but as you can see, everything is super subtle. But on the overall, like the drum bus add is on color by default, even if the dry rate is at uh, 0%. You can see so. And then I bring it mono because so I will I wouldn't usually do that I mean it depends basically but because of this track there is a lot of drum and percussion and it kind of doesn't really matter if it's mono or stereo you doesn't really hear the difference so I would say to put it mono if you don't hear the difference like this you don't have you leave more space obviously on the stereo for other element and then you have the limiter but as you can see it's not even it's just slightly working actually and yeah, you just have this automation here. It's just because of the return and um, and offbeat perk, you have this kind of continuous delay that I don't want to have on the on the break part. So that's allowing me to stop this. And yeah, that's it for the kick. Let's go with the hats. So the hats is always something like very uh, busy part. So as you can see, like the minimum hats that we'll have is that that's my quieter hats part so you can see it's always very busy in hats and usually i have always uh, a clause you can see here the midi pattern i have this which is a clot 16 hats basically like a clause hat then you have this open hat so here doesn't doesn't pay too much attention to the name because here basically the open hat is more acting like a shaker and the shaker is more acting like a open hat i have open hat and and the shaker is more like an open hat of beat and yeah As you can see that's the open hat so here the open hat you, you see you have in the term of velocity you have this up and down uh, velocity which the this one the one the maximum velocity is off bit it's kind of always nice to do like this to have a very driving effect and works well usually with shaker and then you have this shaker which is more like an open hat off beat classic and yeah and yeah that's for the midi pattern and then after i have two more right so that's something that it is in the track i, I guess it's like you have first a first ride which is kind of between the open hearts and the right and then after you have a second ride which is even accentuating this climax effects if we can say so the right is just playing off beat and then you got the second right coming which here the pattern is similar to the one to the open as pattern you can see like with the velocity going up and then 
up, up, up. It's nice to have this tuk -tuk 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 effect. All right, so now let's see in terms of sound itself. Uh, you will see it's, you will find it pretty classic. Uh, it's mainly depend finding the right hats. You can see I just have a bit of EQ and reverb. And a bit of sidechain. Very subtle sidechain. I didn't want to do something too obvious. Open hat is exactly the same. Just an EQ. And a bit of sidechain. This is more about make sure you find the right hat that fits the track and that have the energy that you are looking for. It's kind of classic 909. Same with the ride. Make it mono. I make it mono because for like this the second ride. You can see the second ride is stereo. And what I've done is I've used this. I could have removed the resonance here, but I haven't. Add a bit of reserve and this one is more like you can hear it on the side. I use this is basically the delay uh, device from Ableton and you know I use the other has effect. You know you bring down the feedback, you bring up the dry rate at 100% and then after you put them both in time, one at one millisecond at the minimum and then the second you play with the time around 10-16 milliseconds to kind of get this has effect. And then sidechain again. And then what I've done on top of that is I've kind of used a drum bus to kind of um, first glue, but as well the main reason why I use the drum bus it's to add a bit of transient and clarity because without it you can hear it's quite a bit messy. And I like to use so I use I add a bit of drive and crunch. This again is sort of messy. I always add it just to like when you start to hear the effect and then I stop. And here what I like to do is use the transient. This way you kind of get rid of the tail of the reverb and it's kind of sharp, sharpen the, the tail of the reverb. So you could tell me like, why don't you just reduce the decay of your reverb? The thing is, I want my hats to have the color of large reverb, you know, like the tone of a lot, like being in a large reverb, but without having the long tail. So I could use the gate basically right after my reverb, but I rather leave them like this. And then after I use the drum bus and when you bring the transient down, it's kind of sh shorten a little bit all of this tail and it make it uh, clearer and avoid to have this long tail reverb after messing up with the rest of your mix basically. Like it's more focus, I would say. And yeah, then the limiter is it's not working. You will see sometimes I, I leave the limiter is just uh, in case, but it doesn't work. I could have removed it for sure. All right, yeah, and like I said, you have different kind of pattern. I try to follow exactly as it is in the track. Uh, it might not be like 100% accurate, but probably like 90% accurate. And as you can see, it's like kind of always evolve. And basically, this one is just like the close hat, open hat shaker. The the middle one is like with the right, and the very dark one is like all of together, basically. So the darker, the more hats and the intensity you get, basically. Then you have the snare. So I have a layer, but here the main thing is I've used this sample. So this is, I will come back to it later when I will talk about the, the perk. I've sampled this from a break from the Winston Amon Brother. This is the famous break. Uh, and I've sampled this and I layer it with other kind of snare just to add a bit of texture. There is absolutely no process other than that. But yeah, together you get this kind of and then I just add Because they kind of use, it's not exactly the same snare you use, but it's kind of used like a kind of acoustic snare, uh, this kind of. And all this break stuff is really nice for this kind of techno as well. But again, I will come back to it when I will talk about this other percussion. Then I have a clap. Uh, the clap is, 
I'm not sure you use the clap. It's there is something you see on the build up during the break. It's looking like there is something every two bits, uh, like a kind of clap. And so I put it. You can barely hear. It. But it adds something definitely. It's just a, a, a classic app that I have banned past just to get this kind of feeling uh, to turn be too bright. So then we go to the pair. So the pair is interesting. Uh, the thing is, there is a lot of going on. As you can see, the, already the hats were pretty heavy, and the pack is the same. There is kind of three kind of pack, I would say. There is this four first pack, uh, which I would call like kind of pack to fill in. Like, um, you know, it's the kind of pack that they are here, but if you remove them, uh, you kind of, it's missing something. You have this pack here, which is like kind of the, the lead pack, if I can say. I try to... recreate something similar and then after you have this break pair uh, which are like sample from break from or original sound which is something very common as well uh, in techno but yeah i will come back to this later i'm gonna talk about so the fourth first pair fill in so you have this i use like this i obviously i, I couldn't hear if it's like what is the they, they, they done and what they use in the original but it's kind of i use technique that i use and it was working so here you got the midi pattern is, is this way. So keep in mind you have you you kick at every bit here. Oh. So here you have a kick, kick here, kick here, kick here, and and yeah, here I've used my rack as well. She's per clue, basically it's a delay. I will explain you how it's worked later, but yeah. That's the original sound dry. And this is because the length is it's it's five it's five bar. The thing is, you will already have this shifting with the kick, which is in the four bar uh, loops. So that's nice. And then after, when you add a bit of delay and everything, it's even better. So just a bit of EQ to get rid of the low frequency I didn't need. And then I use this per loop rack, which can't get the groove. And so the thing is about this rack, what it is. Again, if you want to find out more, we put the link in the description. But all right, so I first add the delay to kind of add a bit of repetition, let's say. Then I filter it. I bring it mono because otherwise it's too stereo. And then I use the ping pong delay to add more groove. So basically see it as the first delay more like to more like to add a bit of texture and the second delay really to add groove. And together they are work well and then a bit of reverb and then arm to make things a bit more crunchier an extra reverb and a bit of side chain and yeah that's it for the first perk so second perk Here you can see we have like something like a shaker. Yeah, something between like an organic percussion or and something like a shaker as well. So I've used this uh, percussion. You see this kind of wooden percussion and I have the, the, the vocoder to add a bit of... A bit of noise and amp to really kind of EQ, boost the frequency. I want it and a bit of reverb and here again that is kind of a shake up percussion so you see when I was seeing like feeling percussion is really that it's like if you remove them you feel like it's missing something you know but they don't have like a very major uh, influence but you know this kind of sound when you remove them you feel like it's missing something and your sound is a bit weak and perk 3 so here you can see i use my perk loop wrap again and more or less the same process you see i always band pass but yeah you have here you have this pattern 
and basically what I've done, you can see here, it was basically, um, basically the, the default pattern was like similar to, um, to uh, this one basically. And I just copy it here and I just like kind of remove some of the notes who were there and bring some uh, five summit on upper. And then you can still experiment. Like experiment to see what works for you, what works for the track. But usually pitching the perk five semitone upper or seven or three semitone upper, it, it can be nice or even you can go down obviously, but it can really help to uh, get nice percussion loop. If Again, if you want to find out more about how to create nice perk loop, I have made a tutorial where I, I introduced this rack as well and I explain all of this kind of trick, what MIDI you can use. And I will put the link in the description and you can find out more how, how to create a very interesting percussion loop. Band path because I don't want it to be too bright. Again, this perk loop rack, I'm not gonna go back inside, you know, it's delay and stuff like that. And reverb, bring it mono. Again, this is like... Not a big difference, but you, if you remove it, it's kind of missing something. Then you have perk 4, which is, as you can see, it's exactly almost the same chain than... Uh, and it's exactly the same MIDI pattern. I've just duplicated, but... This time I wanted something more like a kind of a shaker vibe. So more noisy or more like this one as well. Because this kind of, you know, in this rock you have a lot of noisy percussion and noisy hats and, and you need to layer a lot to get of, kind of get this kind of vibes. So you see the original one was kind of a shaker. And band pass just to select the frequency I wanted. Again, this pair could have, which is delay and a bit of sidechain. So if I select this four, you feel it's like kind of lacking a bit of groove and like something. Then you have this perk stuff. So this is something I tried to recreate, like what it was in the in the original. Uh, I use uh, Rave Generator, which is basically a free plugin. I will put the link in the description, and I use different <laughs> preset, which was sounding similar than the one in the original track. I think one is kind of a vocal, but I didn't have any vocal uh, stuff sample, so I use basically a generator with different kind of sound and that's something just like I tried to find sample who was sounding like the original nothing fancy and I just followed the midi as well of the it might be a little bit more sample and a bit but it's mainly that and then after I just like all of them they are kind of just a bit of reverb or EQ and reverb but yeah All right, and then you have this break perk. So this is really interesting and maybe you already know about that, but you can, I like, it's nice to use this kind of uh, break from uh, recording. So if you go back here, you have this, you can find it free online. I think it's free and, and it's called, it's called all the breaks and you have a lot of breaks basically from a lot of different kind of old sound and you can reuse them freely i'm not sure but i think yes you can reuse them freely and and the thing is always cool if you like kind of process them add a bit of filter and one thing you need to do as well it's obviously because the thing is they are pretty like it's pretty uh, slow but obviously when you have a track at 140 it will kind of kind of speed it up, especially with the raw function in Ableton. And, and what I will do usually, with what I've done here, I will kind of sample just... I 
I think I've just sampled this part. And then you have to make sure that uh, it's kind of, the wrap is uh, like kind of nice. So you can just double click here and I kind of make sure they step on the beat. You don't need to do it for all. And this way it's kind of sounding better after with your, with your kick. Of course, there is no kick in this part of the track. And then after you just duplicate. And that's how I get the first one. And because this kind of track, there is kind of always a kind of tri tribal percussion or something. So you can use a uh, tribal sample or tribal loops, or you can make your own obviously, but I like as well to use like a uh, break sound from uh, old sound and with this kind of uh, live drum recording. Here I've done the same. And it's work well in in your track. And yeah, you can. After I had two different variations because I, I feel like there is another one. I I don't know if it was exact. Obviously, it was not exactly this kind of of loop in the original, but to give you an idea how you can uh, implement them in your own track. And yeah. So obviously. Again, about when they are playing, if it's exa I'm not sure it's 100% accurate with the original track. I try to kind of follow a little bit the same structure, obviously. And then, yeah, let's dig into the sand part now. So we have first the bass, which is basically doing like this. So basically for this kind of track, uh, I've used a lot of my rack and I'm just going to show you what is the, it's because it's this kind of detuned buzzy sound that you can hear. So I'm just going to show you how to create this kind of sound and at least I won't have to re-explain the rack. So you take operator, I'm just going to add a bit of reverb just to make it a little bit less dry. And the thing is, for this kind of detuned super soul sound, what you need is a Sotus waveform. But here operator, you can see it's in FM algorithms. So I mean like each oscillator gonna modulate each other. I wanna put it in this algorithm, like this is kind of in parallel and I can hear each um, oscillator independently and I can detune them one from each other to get this buzzy detune effect. So what you have to do is check and put so on its oscillator. So bring up the volume. As you can hear now, you doesn't really hear any difference. It's normal. Just gonna activate all of the later. It's just getting louder a little bit, but you only hear. And what is get when it gets interesting is when you start to detune them. Wait, let me play. Try not to hear. And you can, if I bring the MIDI here, you get already very close, obviously. One thing I, I've done as well, I add a bit of chorus. So it's like this, the chorus with the super soul kind of sound is obviously kind of an enhancer of of the tune is like adding even more character. And so the thing is, I didn't want it to be too stereo, so I just bring it mono because I want the buzziness and the detune pitch modulation of the chorus, but I don't want the stereo. So that's why I use mono here. And then after what I've used, I used a bit of other.
and you get your main kind of ID sound. And this basically is what I've done with my peak sent right. It's exactly the same process. You can see you have your day tune oscillator. They are all like sotus. And you can see I use chorus, a bit of distortion, and I bring everything mono. There is a bit of EQ. It's basically exactly the same. So that's how I made the bass, but you're gonna see, I'm gonna come back to it later. I use basically this exactly same kind of preset for all of the other element. Uh, so you can see you have two bass. So this one, I'm gonna just show you. So yeah, one thing, because you can tell me, oh, but this one is sound different. One thing is the detune is very important. Like the way you're gonna detune, is gonna obviously affect a lot your sound. It's not like just you detune randomly stuff. As you can see in the, in the other one, I did activate this one. And if you check, it's 20, 45, 10, and if I... And yeah, you have a bit more reverb as well, but... And yeah, nothing else. I maybe add a bit of drive on the filter as well. And a, a little bit of plucky envelope to have this pluck at the beginning. And yeah, then you have bass one. So this is not really necessary. I just needed something a little bit lower, like kind of sub oscillator. I needed actually, I've put up, use this one and as a sine wave. Actually, I don't know why I haven't done that. I'm thinking right right now, but. <laughs> Use this one as put this one as a sine wave and bring it down. So I could have used this, but I use this one. I use my uh, Scent 106 rack. It's kind of a Juno Scent rack style. As you can see, exactly the same principle. It's Sotus. All the you know the oscillator are all in parallel. All Sotus, but they are detuned differently. So and with a different chorus, so they sound kind of different. This you can barely hear it. Just add a bit of body, but and yeah, I will put the link in the description if you wanna find out more about this uh, rack. But again, it's same principle. It's like detune so with a bit of chorus, overdrive, and you get this kind of very buzzy uh, synth sound. Then after, it's just finding the right interesting melody to play. So here it's pretty simple, but super effective. What you've got, your root note is F. Let me. And the first note is the fifth one octave down. So this one basically is supposed to be there. According that F is your root note, you have the third here with this G sharp, you have the fourth, which is A sharp, and you have the fifth, which is C2, but you bring down the fifth and then after you go to the third go back to the root note and go back to the fifth to the fourth sorry then and yeah that's your bass line so yeah let's jump into the list sustain so this like i was saying i use you can see again my peak time sent track so you can see if I take this MIDI and I play, you remember this is the one I recreate from scratch. It's kind of pretty similar. I've done some tweak, obviously. One of the main thing I wanted is like, you can hear it's a bit more uh, buzzy and amp is very good for that. I had a bit more drive on the filter. Up, let me bring everything down. Uh, 
But I think, yeah, other than that, it's the same. I removed the, the overdrive and stuff like that. So the amp is a very exciter of this buzzing effect, but in the high, bit of EQ. This is a chorus. And a bit of reverb. And yeah, that's how you get your... Uh, Yeah, obviously they're not playing so it goes like this and play the same melody all right and then we go to the pad and So the body is something like very in the high and it's kind of a bit stressful as well and it's coming slowly here I have a game automation And so again, I use my Send 106 rack. As you can see, it's exactly the same uh, printer than uh, the one for the bass. And again, it's a detune. Again, it's exactly the same principle in terms of sound design. Parallel oscillator with detune. It's all about which detune you're gonna find out and a bit of 24 dB low pass filter. And yeah, obviously the effect you put, a bit of saturation. Chorus again. For this kind of sound, I'm not gonna say it enough, but it's detune sound, detune super soul, or even you can try with square, chorus. And everything in a lot of reverb, and you got your sound. Then after you just have to find, obviously, the right sound, and try the right melody. And this, the midi note, it's... Like this, sorry. Pretty simple, three not. The root, the third. And then finally the lead. So again the lead, no surprise. What you can find, big time sent rack. And yeah, basically from our original scent. If I bring it up, you're already pretty close. So here, yeah, there is a couple of things I have tweaked from the original. And one thing which is interesting before I'm deactivating everything I'm going to tell you is you can see here this scent, this plucky scent, you can see you have the plucky effect from the filter envelope, which is applied here. But you have as well the glide, and the thing is, usually you will put you sent in mono, you know, with the glide. So if I put in one note, so you can hear here. I lose the pluckiness when when it's going up, and that's because uh, it's just one voice. So basically, everything is in legato and the, the filter envelope is now re-triggered basically and the only way to do that to still have the glide and still have your plucky envelope at each note even when there is a glide you know because when your notes are overlapping to each other in this case here the filter envelope will now re-trigger basically so you won't have the plucky effect but so here you have it, but if I put in one, let me show you again. You see? You don't have the plug here. And I wanted the plug, so 
put two voice and you can keep your glide. The glide is very short glide. It's just to have this subtle pitch modulation at the beginning. All right. And yeah, so now let me deactivate. Otherwise, you can see the, the, the patch is exactly the same. 20, detune, 45, super so. Again, I just bring a little bit more attack because just to kind of soften a little bit the plug. And you can see it's the same, eh? Chorus. All right. Again, chorus to get this this like a kind of nice chorus effect but i don't want the stereo so i bring back in mono this is this is my fat sense so this is included in a rack and i will put it in the description if you want to find out more it's distort basically it's like a, a rack with distortion it's like the you know the wave plugin uh, one knob imagine you have just one knob which is doing a lot of things uh, well, it's just making things louder is distortion multiband compression a bit of delay And the reverb. Again, you see I have I've done two different color I mean like you have blue and the pink one and yeah let's actually I didn't talk about the MIDI so it's doing like this sorry I mean I'm just gonna show you I don't know how to really explain but And then it's follow this pattern. And then after you have a second kind of melody, which is more like, like this. Pretty simple but pretty effective obviously it's always like this. You know? The simplest melody are always the best. And always the hardest to get to manage to find one interesting. So yeah, we can talk about the arrangement, but you can see by, by yourself, it starts with an intro without the kick. And then you got the kick. Kick coming. Oh yeah, he done, I haven't do it, but there is this kind of reverse effect that I haven't done. Uh, you can hear in, I think it's there maybe. No, I don't know why it is, but you can like kind of resample your own track and then reverse it. Uh, it's pretty technical. You have this part here. So you can see they always like add more drums here. You had more adds, then you had more percussion. Then they, they've done this kind of bridge variation here just before the main break. And they introduce after this kind of break percussion, more like a three ball percussion. And start again with this hat, with just one right. Here they start to build tension with, with the bass coming. And then after you have the break, you start with just the bass. Then it comes the pad. Great. 
from this end. So you can you can hear this one, but very slowly there is a bit of more filter. You know that's like kind of muffled like to tell you like it's coming you know and then after on the last eight bar you have like the drum coming which is kind of bringing building the tension and making it better and you stop just right before And you see as far as the drop is like the drop is already pretty heavy in hats and percussion so you got this one to play two times add more percussion and then change the melody add more percussion here at the second right and here it's interesting because then he changed the melody In this part, he, he kind of drum variation. He kind of get rid of the of the second ride, and there is probably other drum variation. But and then after he stopped the main lead, and he bring like the one sustain and with the bad part. Stop some of the pair, bring the ride. You have a kind of bridge where you don't have any more the lead sound, and then it starts again. Bring back the drum. So then it goes like this for a long, longer time, and then you got the two last variation. Then you have this pair start back. See how the the bass sound now is like a, just one legato, like to kind of fade out. It's something pretty common, very effective. And then you have the final break. And you have the outro with all of the drum which is pretty heavy and then everything you start to get rid slowly slowly of everything and yeah so that's it for the arrangement now the last things i can talk a bit of about the mastering i've just done like a quick master and i can show you usually you know if you're familiar with my video i always do like this kind of subtle mastering and i think i even used the the, the mastering from another a template because the master is really not the point here so but you can have a look and see what everything does um you know, it's, if you're familiar with my video, I always do more or less the same thing for the mastering. As this kind of a uh, homemade mastering, you know, it's just to kind of see how you sound. Uh, it's sounding uh, loud, but I always prefer to leave this for professional mastering engineer, obviously. So, EQ. Let me guide somewhere where she's busy. Like, let's say around here. Control L. And yeah, EQ, you know, like to cut everything under 25, 30, boost a little bit the, the kick, I remove a bit 
here and boost the high frequency here usually it's around one two kilo high bus, uh, high shift i put my use to db of gain like just to know how like to big gain difference here utility bring the bring the bass under 125 in mono bring a bit more stereo width but this is like very subtle a bit of glue compression just you can see like just to catch a bit of thing here i've got like the the top engage top clipping not too fast attack and release ratio around there the thing is like nothing brutal everything does a little bit i have a mid side eq is just to add a bit of clarity and help a little bit with the stereo a bit more This is color limiter. Usually, this work well with if you do industrial techno or raw stuff. Uh, this color limiter, it's a Max for Life uh, device. It's free. It's coming with a button light. Uh, when you have the suit, obviously, and it it adds a nice color. It it adds nice saturation to your master. And yeah, that's it. But once again, I said the point was not really the master. Uh, Story about master it's just like about how everything has been made how they use the scent in which part they use it uh the thing with the drum as well i think it's really nice valuable information to get with the drum don't don't be scared to layer a lot of hats and a lot of percussion until you get uh, something uh, you like all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you like it you can grab uh, the template the link in the description or if you want to support me or you can grab as well the preset and the midi files uh, of all of the scent for free link in the description as well thank you for watching guys do not hesitate to like share to subscribe and yeah thank you guys bye bye